Hi, good afternoon, everyone, or hello, good morning. Uh, thanks for making the time to join us for this informative webinar. Uh, we are joined by the developers of uh, the CF Chemicals Database, uh, Carbon Mines. Um, so before we start and then make the introductions, I just want to let you know that the session is being recorded and we will share a version of the recording on the Help Center within a few days. Um, throughout this session, let's keep it nice and interactive. So if you have any questions, feel free to add them to the chat box or the question box, and we will address them uh, in the Q&A at, at every section. So I would like to welcome Alina, our main speaker. Hi, Alina. Hello. Hi, good afternoon. Um, Alina is from uh, Carbon Mines. Uh, she's a process engineer for life cycle assessments there. Uh, and um, Alina, maybe you want to give a little introduction also about yourself before yes. I. Uh, yeah. <laughs> sure. Um, yes, I studied process engineering at the RWTH Aachen. And after during my studies, I got um, introduced to life cycle assessment and also to the company or yeah, uh, Carbon Mines. And since my um, master's, um, I was, I've been working there and now I'm taking, I'm responsible for the database development and in, um, in yeah, more about the petroleum and uh, gas field of the database. Well, thank you so much for, for joining us and for making the time to explain the, the data and the methodology and everything to our Stima Pro users. Uh, also welcoming, uh, joining us on this session is a familiar face, <laughs> my colleague Michiel Ulla. And so Michiel has been um, yeah, north of 25 years at Prey. <laughs> and uh, he's the Stima Pro product specialist. Um, he plays a pivotal role in uh, product development, but also in providing support to our CIMA Pro users. So you may have been in touch with myself or Michiel uh, in the past. Uh, Michiel is also part of the database team at Prey, which is responsible for the implementation and uh, update of, uh, of data libraries and impact assessment methods. So hi, Michiel. Thanks for making the time. Yes, welcome, uh, everybody. Oh, yeah, I'll mute my mic. <laughs> Sorry, welcome everybody. Uh, yeah, I'm really pleased to uh, speak to you today. Uh, I'm a chemist as well. Uh, that's a long time ago, <laughs> uh, but I'm really pleased to see uh, all these additional uh, databases, especially on chemicals. I know there's a big demand for it. So, uh, yeah, really look forward to um, well to learn more because I also can learn from others. <laughs> Thanks, Michiel. Um, so now a little bit of what we will, what you can expect in the next hour. Uh, so Alina will start off by explaining, uh, giving an overview of the database. So the content, the coverage, and the sources and methodology. So prior to the to the webinar, we already received a bunch of questions from uh, from the attendees. So it's really nice to see the, the interest there. Uh, following Alina's part, we will come back. To SEMA Pro, we will show you how you can access the data, explain the pricing and the different packages that we offer, and then Michel will give a demo or a short tour in SEMA Pro to show you what the data actually looks like and give some nice examples there. Maybe just a bit before we start, if there are some uh, audience members who are not already SEMA Pro users or familiar with Prey, a uh, little background about uh, Prey. Uh, so we've developed uh, CIMA Pro uh, starting in 1990, uh, and since then our, real, our goal has been to uh, empower LCA practitioners, uh, sustainability experts, business managers to get the facts right. So it's really uh, yeah, uh, empowering and, and um, providing insights. Uh, our values include innovation, transparency, and, for, uh, and uh, foremost uh, collaboration, and we're really proud of that. Um, we um, we are active in um, uh, globally, so we have a large community of users, but also see our partners around the world, um, and uh, we sell and support users in I think over eighty countries at the moment. 
Um, so we're very proud of that. And uh, we are based on a little physical home sport in the Netherlands. Uh, but yeah, again, working globally. So before I hand off things to you, Alina, I just wanted to mention something. I'm not sure if Simapro audience is aware. Uh, but in Simapro, when you purchase a license, by default, you have a number of libraries. And then default, what we call professional database. Uh, but in addition to that, we have a number of uh, data libraries available for CMAPRO users as an additional download. And there are some of the data sources uh, or data libraries are still free, but some of them require additional licensing, uh, as with uh, carbon mines. But we would also always like to invite users to check out authors out there. Um, and uh, some reason where they're not offered by default is, for example, additional licensing or agreement. Uh, yeah, costs involved, but also uh, it could be for very special uh, data or, I don't know, a specific regional coverage or a specific sector that might not be interesting for the wider range of CMAPR users, and that's why we choose to have it separately. But I would like to invite all, all of you to, to check them, to check that out. Okay, I think that was it for me. Uh, I'm going to remove my uh, webcam <laughs> and I will proceed to make you a leader presenter. Okay. Perfect. I think you can see my screen, right? Yes, it's looking good. Perfect. Um, I will uh, here. Okay. Yes. Um, thank you very much for the introduction, Ruba, and also thank you for inviting us to show the CM Chemicals database. Um, yeah, before starting the talking about the CM Chemicals database, I would like to I would like to um, introduce who we are, who Carbon Mines is. Um, Carbon Mines is all about life cycle data and guidance for uh, more sustainable chemical production. So we are data provider of LCI data sets um, for your LCA um, calculation. We also provide consulting services, for instance, to assess the environmental performance of the client's process and further provide the results for decision making. We also provide training programs about LCA, methodology development and others. And in today's uh, presentation, we will understand a little bit better the generation of the carbon mines database. And the CM chemicals database is characterized by the following facts. The database is, has a huge coverage. Um, we cover, or we have more than 80,000 data sets um, covering more than 1,000 chemicals and plastics. We are a very regionalized data, or our database is very regionalized. Um, we cover more than 190 regions. And one fact that's also very interesting, we are, um, our database is certified by a third party to show compliance of our data methodology with the ISO standards, 14040 and 14044 and 67. So after this quick overview, let's understand the carbon mines methodology um, used behind the CM chemicals database or that to build the database. Well, to build a life cycle inventory database um, of the chemical industry, we need a very, very good understanding of the structure of the chemical industry. For that, we have to look, we have to collect a lot of data. Um, yeah, um, for first, we will need to understand that for each chemical, there are typically several production locations all over the world. This is represented here in this map by the little dots, and each production location has a respective annual production volume that we will have also to know. 
Secondly, chemicals are typically produced using different production technologies. So we need to understand in which production site, which technology is being used. And for that, we need detailed technical models of each technology in order to determine the inputs, outputs, and emissions in every single chemical plant. Furthermore, we need to understand how chemicals are traded globally. International trade interconnects the different production sites. This means the different dots on this map. Um, so that the supply chains of the chemicals in different regions depend on each other. For example, the consumption mix of a chemical in Germany can in some cases be fully um, supported or supplied by imported mixes from other countries. So in summary, connecting all these uh, points, this means market data, technical data, and trade data, we are able to track the chemicals throughout the whole global economy. And this is exactly what we did on our modeling approach at Carbon Mines. So in contrast to most of the LCI databases, our model does not start on a country level. We start on a plant level. So actually we model the real plants that are operating at different locations in the world. So what we first do is that for each chemical plant, we collect information about the production location, production volume, and the production technology that is used in the plant. We link this information to detailed models for each production technology to determine the input and output flows. In the next step, we aggregate these plants into a production site based on their locations. We assume that site-specific production mixes are used to satisfy the demands for raw materials within the integrated production sites. In other words, we calculate internal production mixes and as well internal consumption mixes that supply the plants with intermediates. In case, um, in case this intermediates cannot be supplied by the internal consumption mix, national consumption mix is um, used to supply the production sites. Using this modeling approach, we modeled more than 2,000 production sites um, around the world. So um, in the next step, after modeling each production site, we calculate the national production mixes because the production mix of a chemical usually does not reflect the consumption mix of a chemical in that country. We then calculate the consumption mix. The consumption mix will take into account the regional production and international trade. So the consumption mix is represented by the sum of a country's production mix, as shown here, minus exported chemicals from this country plus imported chemicals of this country. So only by modeling the chemical industry in every single country and then connected them with the trade, we can generate this model, uh, this database, and we can then calculate our results. Okay, so now let's take a look um, how the CM Chemicals database can be used to support environmental decision making. So for that, we will discuss some results of our model. Here, I brought you, I'm sorry, can you still hear me? Yes, we still hear you. Ah, okay, sorry. Um, yeah, uh, so I will continue. So here I brought you an example, um, the production the production of uh, polypropylene. This map shows you 
the climate impact of the consumption mixes of polypropylene in different countries. Here, dark colors indicate a high impact and light colors indicate a low impact. Of course, in addition to the climate impact, the database also provides other um, environmental categories, other LCA methods and indicators. So, but here I brought today just the climate impact. We can see on the map that we have large differences in climate impacts of polypropylene, which vary by a factor of four between the countries. These differences can be due to the different the difference in feedstock use, technologies, energy supply, and also the trade effect. We are going to analyze these differences in the following. However, first, let's take a look at the production mix of polypropylene. Here, we see actually less that, uh, that less than a third of the countries um, produce propylene themselves, and the other countries cover their supply through trade. We can also see that China has by far the largest climate impact, which is a factor of four larger than the smallest climate impact. We can see this by the dark color. If you remember from the modeling approach I explained, the production mix only takes into account national production and do not take into account trade activities of, so in this case of polypropylene. Thus, this means that the high impact of China must be related to difference in feedstock um, use, technology used, and energy um, supply. So when we now want to understand the reason of these large differences, we are going even a step further and we are looking in detail into the raw material used to produce polypropylene. In this case, the raw material used for producing polypropylene is propylene. So we can see that propylene in China is produced by different, uh, different technologies. As being showed here on the um, pie chart with the share of annual production volumes. Here we can see that steam cracking and fluid catalytic cracking are the most um, used technologies, but also methanol to olefin is one of the uh, yeah, uh, often used technology with a share of 19%. On the other hand, when we have a look at the propylene production technologies in the US, we have a completely different picture. There are no methanol to olefin technologies. However, the fluid catalytic cracking technology is used more than in China. So which consequences does these different shares have on the global warming impact? Well, if we now have a look at the climate impact of propylene production for the different production technologies, we can see that the methanol to olefin technologies have by far the largest climate impact. So now, this also explains why we have a higher impact on the production mix for, uh, for propylene, consequently polypropylene in China than in the US. So it's because of the different production technologies used. Of course, do not forget the energy supply in uh, China is more coal based, but with this, uh, with our database, you can see also the difference on uh, the impact due to the technologies. Okay, so um, what can we say about the CM Chemicals database? That the, uh, the CM Chemicals database have um, four main differentiators that are the technology specific data. It is a highly regionalized data. Um, a detailed trait uh, has a detailed trait uh, model behind and is also um, certified by a third party, in this case, uh, to find land. And this leads us to us all, LCA practitioners, to a more representative LCA results. 
So how do we maintain this database? Well, here you can see that on the left side, we have the inputs, which come from different sources. The inputs that I explained to you before by showing the methodology that we need the production location, volume, um, technology used, and the international um, trade flows. Then we put this inputs data to build in, yeah, um, to build our lifecycle inventory model and calculate our results. From this lifecycle inventory model, we export system processes, so basically Cradle to gate lifecycle inventories, which are then available in the CM Chemicals database and in the data packages that we extract from the database. Of course, we did not only do this once, we annually update and maintain each data set. So we update not only the energy mixes, but also the plant capacities, the trade flow, and everything along the complete chain, <laughs> um, supply chain. And every year, this um, all this process of maintaining, updating, is checked by the third party review, which is to Greenland. So after understanding how the database is modeled, implemented, let's take a look into the data packages that are available within CIMA Pro. Well, we have available two um, packages um, from the from Carbon Mines, which are the Essential Chemicals Global Insights, which have um, includes production mix, consumption mix, and major production technologies for 78 chemicals in all available um, regions. And we have also the plastic package, um, which includes also 78 plastics. Um, in all available regions in the data sets formats, production mix, consumption mix, and with the major production technologies as well. In case the data set, the chemical you are looking for is not available in one of these databases, uh, data packages, you can um, contact us and we can provide you a data on demand, um, yeah, LCI data set. So to give you a insight of which chemicals we have in each uh, data package, I brought you here the list of the chemicals. Of course, you don't need to read this now. It's just for um, giving you a little overview. Please feel free to um, enter our website to see exactly, um, to have this list um, and see which chemicals we have. Here is for the chemicals package. And here's for the plastic packages. And before finalizing my um, presentation, I would like to invite you for our um, upcoming seminar, uh, webinar, which will be a panel discussion about the TFS compliant product carbon footprint database for chemical materials and products. Well, what does it mean TFS? TFS means Together for Sustainability, and it is a global initiative of a group of chemical companies, as for example, BASF, and um, they um, aim to improve sustainability practices throughout their supply chain. TFS launched recently a full product carbon footprint guideline to support a carbon footprint calculation for the chemical materials and products. And that's why it's very interesting for, for the chemical industry. And on the 20th of April at 4 p.m. Um, German time, we will have a panel discussion that will bring together representatives from different parts of the chemical supply chain including producers, distributors, and consumers, and topics such as um, challenges and value of PCF calculations and the effects of the TFS um, are going to be discussed. So don't miss it, and we are happy to invite you. Thank you, Alina. I hope, I know uh, my uh, sound was not being heard very well. I hope you hear me now. 
Um, before we take a few questions for Alina, I was hoping to uh, launch a poll and uh, just to gauge a little bit of the interest. So which data would be more interesting for your application? What do you think the essentials, the global insights, um, basically the essential chemicals data that I mentioned, or the plastics, or instead of the entire package, you would like, for example, more data on demand. We'll wait a few, sec a few seconds, I guess, more. Okay, I'll close and share the responses. Quite interesting. <laughs> it's a it's a tie in a way, so there's yeah. interest for all. So that's uh, that's quite interesting. Okay, um, shall we take a few questions, Alina, before uh, we move yes, on? Yes, sure. Mm -hmm. Let's see what's Okay. My question is if the packages include agrochemicals. Um, can you repeat? I didn't understand. If the data packages provide agrochemicals or if you have in general data about agrochemicals. Oh, I'm hearing you very bent. Um, okay. I'll switch. So, sorry for that. Um, so Ruba was asking if your databases contain any information or countries on agro agrochemicals, like pesticides. Um, okay. Um, I would say no. However, um, we can check if some additives or some, um, no. we can check in the yeah scope. Yeah, yeah. Do you hear me? Oh, thanks. Um, sorry. Um, sorry, I lost you for a moment. Um, but did you hear my question? Yes. You could okay, hear my question? Yes, no. I could hear you perfectly. Um, okay. Yes. The. I think. No, but we could maybe some additives we would have um, that are interesting for the agriculture uh, field um, that we could have in our database. We the best would be to look into the um, scope in our website, and in case it's not there, send us an uh, email and we can maybe model it for the future. Okay. Um, now another question is you, if you have data for recycled plastics in your plastics database, that's an interesting one. That's a very interesting question yeah. and it's coming up very, very yeah. often. Um, we don't have as a, a data um, set, however, we perform a lot of um, LCAs for recycling because you have to Keep in mind, there is some uh, methodologies you have to follow um, for recycling materials and in LCA. So we are able to do it, but we don't have as a package or okay. as a data set. Yeah. So that would be on the mountain? E yes, it will be on a more consulting service because it also depends. Um, yeah, it, I would say more on consulting service and not uh, data on demand. Yeah. Okay. Um, well, there were quite some questions about certain yeah groups of plastics like bioplastics or refrigerants. Um, um, the bio um, field we are we are that's a area that we are developing um, still. So. For now, we don't have it, but mm -hmm. 
if someone has the data that we can then, um, it's a company that has the data and we can perform an LCA, we are, this we can uh, provide then, but there is yeah. not on data packages. Yeah. Um, let's see. Uh, somebody is asking if you could share the link for the TUPS webinar, but I assume that if people go to your Carbon Minds website, they will find it. Yeah, um, yes, on the, there will be some posts um, in LinkedIn, for example, and then you can have, uh, there will be the link and everything explained. Okay, then uh, some more, let's say, methodological questions. Yes. Uh, how, um, like, how were the 2000 production sites selected? How did you get access to the data? Um, that's a really good question, also coming very often. It, mm -hmm. um, this data is available out there. It's data that, for example, from market intelligence um, businesses that, however, until now, everyone was looking only on, onto the economic part. No yeah. one was taking a little look on the, um, yeah ecological part so that's <laughs> the, yeah. the thing yeah yeah but would you say it's it's really primary data or is it um, derived in, in a way um i would say it's secondary data however mm -hmm. a lot of also that's one of our um checks every time we have um um a consulting with a big company that we know we have uh, modeled their processes in our mm -hmm. um, database we ask some uh, for some checks for example we show them our um, values and most of the cases is the values are really really similar to there so um, yeah. we can say it is secondary data but it's being checked by the expertise of the industry yeah a somewhat similar question or related question is how did you create specific inventories for each technology used to produce a specific compounds? I mean, we're probably chemical engineers, but <laughs> perhaps uh, you can explain um, a bit more. As I said, from the input data, you have already the different. Um, the, there is already separated in the. That there is one of the input data give us for each technology um, the um, the possibility to calculate input and outputs and emissions, so we can then uh, separate everything in the specific technologies. And yep. uh, yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, there's quite some questions to be honest. So we, do you mind if I uh, ask a few more? Yes, uh, feel free. Okay. Um, I just pick random questions, so don't feel uh, offended if yours is not taken or not answered. We will really try to answer everything after uh, the meeting by email. Um, one other question, what kind of documentation do you offer? Are the assumptions on your plan models available as well as the sources on your market data? Um, yeah, sure. We have the, if you go to the Carbon Mines uh, website, in the um, data field, you have a methodology where it's everything written, also how we uh, model the trade data, the transportation mm -hmm. data, so you can find everything online. Okay, great. Um, related, well, not really related. Um, so you generate system processes, at least that's what we offer in, in our SEMA code libraries. Um, what if you want to have uh, unit processes? Because somebody says it could be interesting to assess the impact of a chemical product if it was produced with renewable energy only, for example. I agree, that would be a very interesting um, yeah, um, thing to observe. However, if we do not provide the unit uh, process data because then it's possible to to come um, to calculate backwards and this is um, according to 
our um, how can I say yeah to the data provider for the calculation of the LCAs that it's not um, possible. Okay. Um, yeah. yeah. Um, so some people are asking about uh, the question, the question, what has changed compared to the previous package that we offered? Um, yes, we calculated. Um, I have um, a minute. I have some points here, but I didn't show the slide yet yeah, here from the previous one. We have now in uh, this database. We have updated the biogenic carbon content calculation. Biogenic. Can you, yeah. Can you share your screen? I, think, I don't think I see it. Uh, I'm, I'm not sharing. I'm just uh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, pointing out. And yeah. uh, biogenic emission calculations. And we revised some, um, some CAS numbers. And also, mainly, we updated the background data. As I said, we update every year the trade flows and also um, the energy um, supply. So this everything was updated for the most recent one. Yeah. Um, but this everything also you can find um, in our website. There is the methodology that was before with a change report for the newer methodology. So yeah. everything documented. It. Yeah. Okay, um, let's see. Yeah, I think we one more and then we continue. Um, okay. If you um, look at uh, the Equivent uh, libraries, what system models from Equivent would be the most yeah, equivalent to your way of modeling? So in Equivent, we offer, well, Equivent offers three different flavors, I would say. Uh, we call them APOS, uh, cutoff, and consequential. Yes. Um, what um, would be the most matching one? The most matching one would be the cutoff. OK. Yeah. OK, thank you. Um, so if your questions were not answered yet, we will uh, make sure that you get an answer via email. Um, yeah, let's continue with uh, some more information on how to get um, the data from us and how to import them. And I will give you a quick tour in SEMA Pro. Um, yeah. yeah, so how to get the uh, chemicals or, well, and any of the two databases. Um, Either you contact your local partner because we do have a local an international partner network. But if you want to purchase it from us, you can go to our website. You go to website simapro.com. You go to the products section and you choose the carbon mines database. Uh, you come at a page uh, where you can request a quote. Uh, if you request a quote, you go to the bottom. Well, it's very clear, request a quote. Um, if you look uh, for methodology reports, you will find them in the, uh, on the right-hand side. You can download them for free uh, and, and use them and read them, all that sort of things. Of course, you can also mail our sales team at sales at sumapro.com. Please indicate which version you're interested in, and then we'll uh, help supply you with a, a quote. To give you an indication of the prices, um, the data packages uh, come as yearly subscription. We have educational licenses, commercial licenses, and well, these are the prices per user per year. Uh, and again, if you have any questions about the pricing um, and order conditions, then yeah, our sales team is happy to answer those. Um, so suppose you have sent this request for a quote and you decided to order. What will you get? Um, you get a link with a download link or a zip file that has instructions with it, how to install and import. Essentially, it's like any other update of SEMA Pro. You run the setup file to install the database, and you import the installed database into your working database. Well, typically, that's professional, but you may have renamed it to something else. 
and when the import is done, you can so Ruba showed it before, you will see the new data library in your section of, of libraries. In order to use it, of course, you have to select the library in your projects. Um, yeah, and then this is how it looks like. Um, of course, this is a screenshot. I will now give you a brief demo and then we continue. Um, so let me share my screen. Uh, I think I'm not the presenter yet. Hmm? Okay. All right. Um, so I have imported uh, Agri Footprint in my database in my project window. I see CM Chemicals and actually uh, bought both. Well, let's make it easy. Um, so I have the essentials and the plastics libraries imported. Um, I have my projects, this example project, and I selected both of the libraries and I can see them. Of course, you need to have the methods uh, available to make any calculations. Now, if you are a single pro user, you probably know all of this, but there might be some people that don't really know. Um, single pro comes, um, uh, in single pro you define processes per main category, materials, energy, transport, etc. Well, all these chemicals and plastics, they are in the materials. Um, and from there, you can drill down and find uh, specific chemicals that you're looking for. So, whether it's uh, organic acids, you can see the consumption mix, or the production mix, or the technology specific mixes for certain chemicals. And from there, you can um, yeah, look at the data or make comparisons and all that sort of thing. So, it's um, quite some items that you get if you have both the libraries you can see they're close to 17,000 items um, so it can be a little bit overwhelming to look up some data there are several ways of searching the database one very simple way is to use this option show as list which will show uh, the data not in the category structure as we see here but as one huge list and you can well start typing the name if you want polyethylene something you start typing poly and it will jump to poly now with plastics there are quite some substance or plastics poly something um so we also have a filter to make that more easy so polyethylene and then i will show you and then suppose i'm interested in polyethylene just from the Netherlands, I type Netherlands and I'll get everything with Netherlands. Um, that's where you can yeah, reduce uh, and quickly find uh, the process that you are interested in. So one question uh, asking if you could do a lookup through a cat's number. Unfortunately, that's, uh, that's not possible. Um, Okay, so we have these uh, these processes, um, and let's say I think at the example of polypropylene, and I'm interested in polypropylene in in the Netherlands. Yay! Um, and I want to see what is the difference between the consumption mix and the production mix. Um, so I can make a comparison. Actually, you see them double of the library. So this propylene is available in both plastics and essential. And yeah, the result is actually the same. It's a copy. Um, I can open it. Um, there are some chemicals that just a few that you have in the plastic uh, package. You have also in the chemical essential pla pla yep. package. Yeah. Just because we thought at the beginning it's more important also for the people from the chemical industry to know a little bit more about this, and then also in, from the plastic industry. Yeah, so you have some over. Yeah, yeah. indeed, there is some overlap, but um, especially for yeah, plastics, uh, I think there are like eight plastics also in the chemicals database, and 
Lessig exactly. database itself is like 70 something. Mm -hmm. um, so just looking at the structure, uh, a typical process in Sigma Pro starts with the documentation. In the first step, so I say there's quite some extensive documentation. Um, then we go to the input output tab. Um, as was already indicated, these are aggregated system processes, um, which means that you only see the what we call the inventory, the list of inputs from nature and the emissions to nature, uh, which is actually quite a long list. Um, well, I can scroll through it, but yeah. Um, Quite, uh, quite a long list, that's clear. Uh, because it is a uh, system process, obviously there's no parameters and it's a system description, which also gives some little bit of additional information. Um, well, it's useful if you want to deep dive into, uh, into your model. Now, suppose you, uh, you are looking at comparisons, you can make all sorts of comparisons in, in Schema Pro. Um, you can say, I want to see what is the difference for the Netherlands between the consumption and production mix. You will compare the default method recipe, but I could also choose FGCC if I'm interested in just global warming. Uh, adds up to the user. Calculating, you actually see that the consumption mix is slightly higher than the production mix in the interest we import polypropylene from other countries with well, slightly higher impact. Um, you can do this for two items. You can do this for many items. And polypropylene, but I'm only interested. And then you see all the production mixes for a lot of countries. Now, it's a little bit confusing to see everything double. So I'm going which of one of the libraries, and I just take processes. Um, and um, let's see, I remember from your presentation that China was actually quite high. And well, let's pick a few random. Countries to compare it with. China yes. and the US. Yeah. So China, uh, let's go. Oh. China, EU, US. And then I think coming economies, India. Let's compare that. And let's see what it China is the biggest one. And, um, mm. other countries. Um, in Sigma Pro, you can double click on any result or use the right mouse, right mouse click. Um, so if you want to know what is uh, the contribution of this process to the resources impact category, ecosystems category, human health category, simply click on the color. You'll get a pop-up window and you can say, Give me a specification per contributing substance, per contributing process. Per contributing process in this situation is not possible because it's an aggregated system process. So you cannot specify per process, but I can ask for specification per substance. And it will give you an overview of all the contributing substances, uh, which are yeah, relevant for resources in this. Uh, um, example, I can sort and oh, sort the other way. It's, um, and see that in, in this situation, the oil, food oil is the, uh, yeah, the contributing uh, factor, which is uh, not surprising. Uh, I can do the same for ecosystems. Um, which gives a bit of an unexpected result where you think, hey, the water turbine use, that is weird, but the way the, the water is handled in impact assessment model, in impact assessment modeling in Sigma Pro, we see, we do balancing. So we have 
input of water turbine use, but we compensate with an output of water at, with a negative flow at the bottom. Uh, so you should ignore this and look at carbon dioxide, which is really the well the hot item in the world at the moment. Um, from here you can yeah drill down and look at any um, contributing substances that you that you would like. Uh, and there's many uh, options to uh, analyze the model and that sort of things in Singapore, but I don't have time to go through that. Um, Ruba, are there any questions so far? Questions on? I'm not sure if you hear me. I can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's mostly about the use uh, about carbon mines, not the use uh, about okay. the use in Singapore. So... Yeah. So um, yeah, if you have any questions about use uh, of Singapore, yeah, feel free to reach out to our own support people, support at singapore.com. Um, if you uh, are interested in uh, carbon mines or any of the additional databases that we offer, you can also go to help, select additional li data libraries, and then a website, uh, web page will open from our Singapore Health Center. And there you'll find the additional databases available, uh, or yeah, databases available plus the additional databases, including carbon mines. Um, the nice thing of this page is if you scroll down, it's a great uh, list of all the processes that we have available in CMAPO. It's just a list of all the process names, uh, but if you want to check, uh, let's say carbon mines or a tile base or whatever if whatever funny weird substance glow products is available you can yeah go through that excel file and, and try to look it up so yeah really um yeah really useful for uh, for people um yeah and from here you can go to the carbon mines page that we, i showed before and again you can see the price list methodology and request a quote. And yeah, that's um, up to you. Um, I'll jump to some questions. Okay. Um, stop sharing my screen. So some quite some new questions, I think. Um, let's see. Some questions if it's compatible with the industry. Um, um, yeah, can carbon mines be used together with data from other libraries like industry data? You can vet, I guess. Um, sure, yes, no. it can okay. be used. Um, and also for your knowledge in the database um the energy mixes for example and so on they come for the carbon mines database they come from equinvent so it's totally you can use for sure with equinvent and yeah 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 personally i would say for consistency i, I recommend to pick one database um, yes. so if you are really modeling chemicals and you need data, you can get a lot of data from carbon mines, use carbon mines as the main source and use Equivent to back up if you cannot find anything or vice versa. Yeah, um, I agree. that's very important yeah. to go, to maintain with the same methodology when implementing, when performing an LCA. Yeah. No. Um, as one question about the data quality, um, you, you are giving an indication of the data quality in the process comments. Some are uh, mentioned very good or labeled very good and some are fair. Um, how, just compare, how do you compare a fair data set with a very good one or is fair compatible with industry data or Econvent or? Oh, for answering yeah. this question, it's, um, I would, Suggest you to take the um, our the way of our description of the quality of the data and uh, the indicators together with Equinvent and then see 
And there is also the description why it's fair, why is this data qualified as fair, and then um, to mm -hmm. check which one pass, oh, yeah, match the best. Okay. Um, somebody is asking uh, because the data are all system processes, is there a way to get a kind of detailed network diagram when we try to understand the process? So, for example, if you're analyzing polypropylene, is there still a way to see, yeah, some kind of a flowchart or another way? Um, we provide as well contribution analysis. Um, okay. However, it's not part of the database, uh, no. data packages. I'm sorry. Yeah. So they would need to contact you, and is that considered, um, yeah, data yeah. on demand or? Yeah. It will be another product within carbon mines. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that's and then the, 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 the contribution. Sorry, the contribution analysis will be divided into some um, some um, fields like the energy supply, thermal energy supply, and uh, raw material, and so on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, one more question about data availability. Somebody was clearly in the uh, in the Paint industry, I think paints, thinners, hardeners, glues, other related chemical mixes used in uh, construction. Um, oh, I cannot answer you this question. We, I probably should look into the scope also, or we can look together. Um, yeah, and the scope no. data sheet that we have on the website. Yeah, okay. Um, one more question about the, the way you model energy. Um, how do you take the regional energy inventory when you model, or are you able to use the specific energy mixes that is um, used in each plant? I can imagine that there's a lot of internal energy production at refineries and that sort of things. Perhaps you can elaborate on it. Um, yes, that's a good question. We have. When modeling, um, we have some assumptions, for example, um, with energy recovery in the production site. So we assume that there is energy recovery in, within the production site that um, makes us not purchase more energy from the regionalized energy mix. So um, you have to purchase, purchase less. This we do. Um, this is everything also described in the methodology in the energy uh, part. Also, um, but as I said, we take then equivalent data for the energy mixes, the regionalized ones, and uh, used to modulate the production sites. Okay. Um, I think, um, yeah, we covered most of the questions, not all. As I said, we will answer those uh, later. Via email. Um, yeah, that brings us to the end of this session. And we're on time. That's always nice. Um, I really want to thank the audience for their attention. And sorry about the noise quality at some point. <laughs> sorry about the noise quality of some point. I echo my partner here. <laughs> um, yeah, so. Um, you know, also, thank you very much for your presentation. And um, yeah, I'm sure. Uh, we get um, more questions and that sort of things. Um, sure, sure. I will be yeah. happy to answer them. Thank you very much, also. Yes, and yeah. So for now, I say, well, have a nice day, whether it's evening, afternoon, or morning, and talk to you another time. Thank you very much.